Hi everyone and welcome back and today I am thrilled to be joined by the lovely Chrissy Sawyer who is a Soul Path facilitator, healer and therapist. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what that entails Chrissy and what it is that you do? No. Oh, okay, <laughs> bye then. <laughs> that was a quick interview, wow. <laughs> okay, hi Helen, it's great to see you um, and thank you so much for inviting me into this space um, let's see if we can blow the field up a little bit so uh, yeah um, counselor to begin with um, trauma therapist is my background and my history PTSD moral injury um, trauma and I tend to kind of center my work around the grown wounded child so I get to work with lots of beautiful children who are presenting through beautiful adults and help the adults to kind of challenge that behavior and meet it and reintegrate those uh, sometimes missing parts of self or the part of the, the little one that got squashed or quieted um, to help them reconnect with passion and joy. And what's happened, is, and that's kind of 13, 14 years I've been doing that. And my work has evolved now into soul path work. So I do um, kind of, I think I help people to find their North Node, their destiny point where their compass is aligned to forward motion. And also what's maybe stopping them or where they're feeling resistance in that so I do soul journey work which uh, takes them on a deep dive into inner vision and um, what happens from that is the nuts and bolts of what they need to work on tend to drop out of those sessions um, and soul path is rebuilding the bridge soul is the bridge between the physical and the non-physical and that's where we access our metaphysical realms the non-physical realities and from there we can kind of reconnect with let's say galactic connections um, galactic family and then kind of rebirth that whole feeling held feeling supported having a different conversation and yeah just deep awakening and rebirthing mm. And that's an important theme right now, isn't it? Especially in like the psychic, the holistic communities. That's something that I tend to come across a lot is people, including myself, you know, that we come from a history of trauma and that's why we're drawn to do this healing work that we actually do, to do this spiritual work, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think I've come to believe and I'm open to being challenged that trauma is actually a really powerful gateway um, mm -hmm. to connect at a soul level with who and what we are and what we came here to be. Um, and I've been saying an awful lot, I know it's only Tuesday, but already this week I've been saying in my client base that we are rewiring our relationship to conflict in that I'm kind of being shown the other side of, let's call it a tower moment. So the tower in the major arcana is where there is swift and sudden change and I call the tower tearing down the edifice of my own creation. But what do I need for that? Well, I need a really big catalyst. So I gather conflict and I meet resistance and uh, in myself and build up a head of steam until inevitably I pop. And when I pop, if I'm doing the work, then I'll stay with that and I'll gather that energy and I'll use it to burn down this old forest that no longer serves me, uplifts me, meets my sovereignty, enriches me and nurtures me. Um, and yeah, there's a part of me that believes, I don't know if you agree with this, that everything we don't know we do, it's all within, everything is within. So there's a part of me that knows exactly why she's here, why she's incarnated at this time. Do you feel the same? I do, yes. It it's difficult, isn't it? It's bemusing at times to know that you know, but you don't know at the same time. And I, I do believe that, but sometimes it's difficult to to truly know it until you know it. I suppose it's something that comes with experience, isn't it? When you realise that you actually did know and you were able to tap into something. Um, I think you have to have at least one of those experiences to really get it. It's something that you kind of learn by doing, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah, I totally agree. Sometimes I'd laugh at myself at what a muppet I can be. When something is hidden in plain sight and it's right under my nose and my mind wants to make it all complicated and important, give it purpose and meaning, but actually it's just like, all you needed to do was pick the cup up, Chrissy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just want to mention for any non-tarot readers out there, we were talking about um, the tower, which is a tarot card. Um, just for the record, for anyone who didn't know, in case they were confused why we were talking about falling towers. We're not talking about the Tower of Babel, or maybe we are. Um, I know before the session, you actually pulled a couple of cards um, to get a theme for the session of what you wanted to talk about. Do you just want to share those with everyone, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm becoming endlessly fascinated with the world of archetypes. And um, so I have an archetype de deck and... I think my mission or one of my missions is actually to challenge these archetypes, which seem to be getting uplifted and reborn into something new, a bigger path for us to walk down. And so uh, the two cards that have come out are the warrior and the student. And um, so the warrior speaks into discipline it speaks into actually a commitment to self. There's almost a two of cups energy in there of what are you holding hands with? What are you bonded to? Where is your commitment? Um, very often, especially in this field, the commitment is to self. And the warrior is about learning. So learning skills, strength, toughness of will, right? And it's also about self-sacrifice of conquering the ego or mastering the ego so that that strength of will can translate transmute from my will to divine will and that is the giving over of the egoic self to kind of say stand down mate i know you must be tired Let's go a different path. Let's be guided by spirit and intuition and pure impulse. And let's, if we lead with that, what's going to happen? So the shadow aspect of the warrior is kind of thinking you're better than that, thinking you're stronger than that, not meeting this inner power with humility and grace. The student speaks into here now very much is the amount of times I've said, on my videos bring beginner's mind beginner's mind needs playfulness childlikeness it needs um, a certain level of innocence and naivety and it needs the blinkers off which in itself in a very very controlled paradigm of this is what you say and this is what you don't say can be a challenge and like i always say as we pull the new light in it's going to hit every layer of resistance on the way in. So the light attributes of the student are humility and devotion to knowledge. So here we go, devotion to gnosis, which is devotion to self, openness to lifelong learning um, in its shadow attributes. It's arrogance um, and it's using knowledge to kind of, to not, I don't like the word teach, to not feed, guide, nurture another soul that's breaking through. Again, humility is really coming through strongly in both of these. Unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. Now, we are moving through quite a, a few weeks of some stuck, heavy, shadowy energy where we have even unbeknownst to us been downloading and downloading and downloading okay so, so here we have the active masculine principle coming in going what do you want me to do <laughs> what you mean i've got to be that thing in the world well yeah you've got to put it into our well I, I'd, uh, I'd rather just sit and channel and be holier <laughs> no you've got to do it you've got to dance you dance and um Talky talk, what's that going to challenge? That's going to challenge narrative. I can't say that thing, that's too brutal. That's too impolite. Are you sure about that? Because we're building a new world here, so we can't possibly know what we're doing just yet. We've got to be innocent, 
children sitting cross-legged on the floor <laughs> learning. So yeah, student and warrior. What do you get from these cards, Helen? Well, I find it fascinating because we obviously trauma is your topic it's your field um and, and how that plays into the the whole being and how we become the the whole being perhaps thanks to those experiences but um looking at those two cards what i see is the traumatized soul who was the warrior and has become the student as a result of it to me that's kind of like the traumatized soul the warrior student <laughs> if that makes sense mm. yeah, yeah that's such an uplift isn't it from that traumatized place to being open to learning to become teachable mm. and not easy either because i mean we're always talking i mean in the holistic community in the ast astrology astrology community we're always talking about you know all oh, the age of aquarius is coming the age of aquarius is coming but it's actually quite a long way off and i don't think many people realize how far off it is i think in tropical astrology it's like 350 years in sidereal it's about 750 i think i heard the other day um and i didn't realize it was quite that far off i knew it was coming i knew it was a little way off but even that's a that, that even surprised me so we really are pioneers we're the pioneers of the pioneers at this point getting prepared for this whole new energy still in the age of pisces um and I think it's very easy to lose sight of the fact that we are still in this very Piscean energy because uh, we're ready to charge into the new, in, into the Atlantean, um, oh, that's interesting slip there, into the yeah. Atlantean Aquarian energy. And it is an Atlantean energy, isn't it? It, it is. Um, and I wonder actually if Atlantis was around in the Aquarian age. I, I don't know. I must look that up. If anyone knows, please leave a comment below. Um, but we, we're desperate to charge into this new energy, but we don't know how. We haven't finished off the Pisces age yet, have we? And Pisces, um, now I'm not an astrologist, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, Pisces can be very introverted. It's very dreamy. It's very, very much um, looking at the self and looking inwards, isn't it? It's the last sign of the zodiac. It turns inwards. It kind of assesses everything that's happened. Um, and it feels very much like that's our job in this lifetime and i've been saying this a lot recently as well that our role and particularly what i feel my role to be in this lifetime is to do my work and that's the most important thing i can do because as we are all connected when i do my work i'm helping everybody else by osmosis so i don't know how you, how you see that my heart is pumping just listening to you it, i feel suddenly so excited um yeah, Pisces is 12th house, and if there's anywhere to bury trauma, it's 12th house. It's, it's what's behind me that you can't quite see. And so as we transition between this ending of cycles into this beginning of cycles, um, that's a huge shift. I mean, that's a colossal shift. Um, yeah. That's it. I'm processing everything that you just said, and thank you. That's a beautiful, really powerful words. And it's interesting to me as well that you were saying about the masculine and talking very much into that today, because we are obviously it's a Tuesday. That is a Mars day. Um, we're in Martian energy, aren't we? I only know that because I speak French and it's really easy to sort of pull the planetary names out of the names of the days of the week in the French language. So that's the only way I remember it. Um, but it is a very Martian energy and I kind of wanted to wear red today. I'm actually wearing black, but part of me wanted to put red lipstick on and I thought in the end I won't because it will clash horribly with my headset and I'll look ridiculous. But, um, and I don't have any red jewellery to wear particularly. So so we, we didn't, but you know, I'm, I'm feeling very much the Martian energy. I've got my diamond on today instead um, I've, I've gone for diamond energy because it's very potent diamond is such a powerful crystal and for anyone watching this is not a blood diamond this is actually a lab created diamond because i try to do things ethically um but it has a, a a very potent energy which surprised me the the lab created stones still have their own energy they have their own wisdom um but it does feel like a very young stone because it is a very it's almost got like a puppy energy it, it wants to wag its tail and do what you want it to do it's a very very gentle diamond energy which i find fascinating um but it is it's it's mars energy today it's warrior energy you know it's the god of war but how do we bring the god of war into balance because oh my goodness look what he's done these past two centuries we, we look back and think mars what were you doing <laughs> it's kind of like 
what have you done? We've got to clean this up now. This isn't okay. We can't move into, you know, into this new age with with all this discord or all this fighting or this infighting. Um, and what I find fascinating, as each one of us, you know, is challenged to step up to the plate to look at our own trauma. I mean, there's so many issues to do with mental health coming up into the field, which is good, I, I feel, because it's making people look at it finally. Um, but I think it, it also challenges, um, obviously challenges the systems that we have in place, but we are being challenged. The more we learn, the more we are being challenged. Oh, let's separate people down these lines. Let's make these people feel bad and dislike those people and let's create more dissent. And oh my goodness, I mean, social media, what a place for dissent. It's the most antisocial place I've ever been. Um, you know, and, and the comments and the way people interact, it's almost like there's a force working against us as we're trying to do our healing, actively working against us, the challenger energy coming in to sort of throw stones at us as we're trying to run the race. So I don't know if, if that's something that, that you've really noticed or, or what you think about that. Yeah, there's definitely an escalation in how people are suffering. Um, and it's just a perception of whether you're suffering stuck in conflict or whether you are a master builder who is gathering conflict enough to create a catalytic moment where you can burst the heart open move into a deeper level of compassion and i just heard that mars has been exploring his shadow <laughs> um he's been playing with the extremes of oppression and in communication if that's even a word and we i've been saying this sentence a lot recently that we don't evolve until we're threatened with extinction and currently it's kind of an extinction of an old way of life an old paradigm it's a fading epoch of division and hierarchy and patriarchy and so the feminine has been rebirthing the quiet waiting dormant powerful feminine and she's been kind of holding the system for such a long time, for many, many years, encountering all the abuse and the oppression and the violation. Holding that, holding that. And how strong do we truly imagine the feminine is? And now we've got the masculine coming online. And he's coming in as he should be to support. She brings it in, he builds it. Active principle, receptive passive. And it's coming, it, I can see it coming. And in the meantime, the sacrifice for that is we've got to break the heart open. We've got to um, shatter the egoic self-protection mechanisms that we've had to live within just to maybe stay alive. You know, some people who are the most traumatized have had to move into, and I'm no exception, I'm self-healed PTSD, and I had to lean into my shadow masculine for a long time, especially working in a male-dominated industry. A long time coming through that shadow competitive masculine, not realizing that within me was a powerhouse of feminine energy but not ready. I wasn't anywhere near ready. I was exploring arrogance, <laughs> cockiness, um, and resilience, building resilience. So as we come into balance, we must first be out of balance. And that feels like crap sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely an increased escalation, not only of client work, but the type of client work I'm doing and the type of clients that are coming in now. Um, there's, I can see the changes. There is such a shift coming in. And I didn't know the age of Aquarius was some <laughs> up to 700 years away. <laughs> That's mad. It was a shock, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'd, I'd heard 350, but looking at the sidereal, so the real sky, the, the true sky um, sidereal, it, it's actually a lot further away than we think. And it really surprised me. But at the same time, I thought, well, 
we shouldn't be too shocked by that. And I think we shouldn't get too hung up on the names of things either, because in astrology, obviously, you want to look at each degree that you're passing through of, of the whole zodiac, the, the whole 360. Um, because we do get very hung up on signs and, and names. You know, we want to, we're humans, we want to name a thing and we want to put it in a box and give it an identity and that's that and this is this and that's not this. And, th and that's what we want to do all the time. And it's very tidy. But it's not very helpful for, for growth, I don't think, when we put things in boxes like that. It's, um, yeah, that's the subconscious doing its work. It seems to have taken over in the over-labelling of stuff. But it, um, it completely belies the infinite. And I said to somebody only today, we were talking about identity and self-identity and the essence of self-identity is to become the infinite self and if i can't describe myself nobody else can and so if i allow another to identify me that must be about them that has to be about them so what i'm seeing in the field is this disentanglement of i need you to define me big time I need you to define me. Well, blow that. I'm done with that. So what I'm working with now in the client field is I want to self-identify, but I don't know where to start because I'm nervous about being, and this is a word that keeps coming out, a misfit. Okay. And so we start to explore what a misfit is. And suddenly this stunning realization that I'm describing a system that I've been clawing at to fit into and it does not resonate with me on any level. So what if I can master being a square peg in a round hole? And what if I can find the courage to turn away from the pack and look outwards at my infinite self? This is not for the faint hearted, this is courageous it's warrior work. This warrior work it's very courageous energy and i think that's um that's a big part isn't it of all of our paths at the moment and i think we're being presented with that challenge do you do as you're told for the sake of acceptance and being a good girl or a good boy or a good citizen or whatever do you do what teacher government parent society says or do you actually listen to your own wisdom and be true to that because maybe you're right you know, and, and, and I don't mean like coming from a place of ego, I mean, literally coming from a place of wisdom. It's like, well, actually, I felt for a long time that this isn't quite right. I feel I want to go in that direction. I'm not just going to follow the herd. And we're seeing, I keep talking about this splitting, the great separation, as I keep calling it, um, this literal splitting apart of our whole world community. It, it's not just in it's not unique to one country, it's happening everywhere. This great separation of people, which I think is necessary. And the, the people over here are the pioneers of the new age, but the people over here just aren't doing that work at the moment. And that's, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, I don't think. Um, we can't all be pioneers at the same time because otherwise there'd be no challenge to being a pioneer. We'd all be going together, what would be the point? <laughs> and I think, um, I wanna just get your opinion on the dark forces that we often talk about or hear about. Um, at work in the world, the powers that should not be, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of miss the point, in my opinion. Obviously, they don't do good or kind or helpful things. But on a soul level, to me, they're actually extremely helpful because without them, we wouldn't know to do this work. We wouldn't have the opportunity to do this work and to have these soul experiences. So even the darkest, most evil people have a really important role to play in all of this. So, I mean, we, we talk a lot about, about shadow work and I think it can get very confusing to people what that means. And they think, well, I mean, does that mean going to the dark side and being on the wrong side of things or, or what? So how, how do you see this this darkness and um, and, and shadow work? How, how do you approach that? How, do you, how would you explain that to somebody? So my late father, who uh, we lost in January, was a very wise man. And um, he always used to say, so in my 30s, I used to tantrum quite a lot because I was coming into that 30 energy, which is unstable creative principle. It's just you're pulling straight from the void and there's no container to put it into. So I was, um, and I was going through an awful lot in my 30s, a whole timeline change. 
And um, I remember one day having a, a really, I think it was just some divine discontent, I was screaming at spirit, I couldn't find my way. And he kind of took me gently by the shoulders and he said, sweetheart, you have to bite the lemon to taste the honey. And that has never left me. That I will take that to my grave because again, if I circle back to, we don't tend to make the big changes unless there is a powerful catalyst, okay? So we're literally talking about the extinction of the old self and the rebirth, the birthing of the new self. So that, that to me is an, a personal extinction point. I can't carry on like this. Okay, so how do we learn? Well, do we learn in love and light? No, we absolutely don't because we need matter to drop into. Matter is shadow. Um, and so when we move to matter and all that is hidden, a, we hit a field of gnosis that's so powerful and it's full of pearls, full of pearls. Um, dark forces. I'm really ambivalent about dark forces uh, and I kind of hold differing viewpoints and I'm holding the dissonance in this. So we can say that there are dark forces or soul harvesters or um, you know, soul displacement is big business, disconnecting the material self from the soul bridge. Um, we can talk into all sorts of current paradigms and the pandemic and whatever. And dark forces can trigger and expose our victim because the mind is extremely powerful and my mind builds my world. So whatever I point my focus to will build my world likewise. So if my world is mirroring back at me dark energies that are out to get me, then there's some part of me that's self-shaming, self-guilting, being suppressed, getting angry, locked in a cage, that kind of energy. And so my only lens must therefore be I'm stuck and life is happening to me. So yeah, on the one hand, I think it can be a really powerful projection of the fear that is in the system at the moment and fear actually is the pandemic. And this, I don't know what is out there. I know some of the energies that I've worked with and I know no matter how dark, love and compassion have always turned the field. When I bring love and compassion to the galactic work that I do, it always turns the field. So am I integrating a higher level of my darkness? Because as below, so above, if there's darkness within me here, then it goes naturally that there's darkness out there. And is that an aspect of me? And me meeting it, not in fear, but in curiosity, is that me integrating? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't give you a definitive answer. There is evidence to support all arguments and it depends on the lens through which we view. Absolutely. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because we create our own reality, our, our individual experience is so important. Uh, I think that's important to honour that as well. So, yeah, I, I like how you said that. Um, this whole paradigm of of meeting our own darkness and welcoming it back in but in the right way and in, in to be healed it, it, i keep going to the bible story uh, i think from the old testament of the prodigal son um of you know the the son who went off misbehaved and then came back but despite all of that the father welcomes him back you know they have a lovely meal and he takes him back into the fold and looks after him and and to me that's the paradigm that, that we're kind of looking at at the moment or the potential that we can be doing it, it's that story isn't it it's that parable um and i'm sure someone's going to correct me in the comments and tell me where that is in the bible because i i'm not good at citing verses but um <laughs> it, it seems a very appropriate story to me right now it feels like a very very appropriate story in that energy very much in the field of meeting the darkness 
recognizing it actually as just a wounded aspect of self and then reintegrating the whole. And, and, and to me, that's a big part of what we are doing at the moment. Um, and there is the flip side of that, which is the trickster energy, which tries to come in and trick us into thinking that's what we're doing when we're actually going the other way. So there is that as well. And it's quite funny, actually, because I see a lot of PR for the devil at the moment. There's a lot of PR out there going on for satanic forces for the devil. Um, very noticeable on TV shows. There's a lot. I mean, all the TV shows, what on earth has happened? They're all dark. They all seem to be filmed with like a really dark filter on them wow. these days, which in itself is quite noticeable to me. But um, like TV shows like Lucifer, which is, I mean, it's it's fun. But at the same time, while I was watching it, I was aware that there was a lot of PR being done for the devil at that point. And I thought, hmm, interesting. <laughs> so, so are you conflating the devil and Lucifer as same or similar energy? Um, that's how it's portrayed in the show. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the, you know, it's the, the dark energy, the, the devil, you know, the, the character, Lucifer Morningstar, you know, he, he goes around saying, oh, I am, I am the devil, and in the story, he is the devil. Um, and I found it very interesting that God is portrayed as being very judgmental, <laughs> and very petty, and really? mysterious, but in really unhelpful ways. And I just thought, oh, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that those forces would be portrayed in that way, like doing and dark you know bad pr for the light and good pr for for the darkness that maybe we should be healing rather than you know elevating so i i find that absolutely fascinating to see in the field at the moment but there there seems to be a lot of that going around at the moment and again i think that's the trickster energy to, to challenge us to see the truth it in is. what's really going on yeah it is it is i remember a long long time ago so i've been meditating for about i don't know 25 years and um, a long time ago, when I was a real novice with meditation, I had this really powerful vision. And um, I was on, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was a desert. I was in the desert, walking through the desert. And this figure, fully cloaked in black, came towards me. And my whole body shut down and went into fear. And I kind of just kind of skirted it and watched it walk past me. And then as I turned around to watch its back, it turned to face me, dropped the cloak, and it was Jesus. And I was, and it was glowing. I mean, just beaming out loud. And the message that I got was, be careful how you judge which was such a powerful lesson that when I responded in fear, that became demonic. So I forgot my curiosity in that moment all those years ago. And I have to say, one of the best workshops I ever did was with the Archangel Lucifer Energy, right? So this was a workshop with Judy Hall and we were doing Archangelic work. This again was a hundred years ago. And we worked with, so Lucifer, the meaning of the word Lucifer is light bearer or light bringer. And um, very powerful and very humble energy when you tune in uh, from a place of openness, I would say. And uh, it was just such a beautiful sacral. He holds sacral or held sacral energy pure creative power, very raw, but very gentle. And, he, and I did a meditation in this energy field and was given this really powerful vision and challenged and he challenged me now then what about this and he laid out in front of me something I'd been working on like four years earlier, it was a deck of cards. And he laid them out on the floor and we were sitting on the floor. In the vision we were sitting on the floor. He said, now then, what about these? And I just curled up in <laughs> shame. It's just like, oh yeah, no, I started it and I didn't finish. And then all these ideas came in. I still haven't created the deck of cards. Maybe I will one day and maybe I won't, but. Maybe this is your nudge to do that. Well, maybe, yeah, yes. There's Elizabeth's in the field, but uh, from me to the crowd that are watching this, I, I have no fear of any energy known as Lucifer, why would I fear light? Um, I need light to feed my cells. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, 
it is interesting what you're saying about how the media are portraying or attempting maybe to slow down this grand awakening. Uh, it's such a powerful transition that we're in. It is. It's fascinating, isn't it? And something that occurred to me this morning, um, actually, in the shower. I have some of my best best ideas in the shower. So, yeah. Def I don't know if it's the water or, or the fact that I haven't got my phone in front of me, which is probably part of it. Um, but it, it was fascinating. And I realised, because there's a lot of fear in the system that things will be put into place, either through technology or implants or whatever, that will disconnect us from the divine. And I know there's a big, big fear about that and it suddenly occurred to me that well they can't do that they can make you think you've been disconnected that's all they can do is they can make you believe you've been disconnected you cannot be disconnected from the divine because it's what you are it's impossible that's like telling a pea that it's not a pea anymore telling it it's a banana well it's never going to be a banana it's always going to be a pea <laughs> and it occurred to me this morning it was such a relief and i thought i need to share this information Yes, th this is actually really good news. Wow, this is great. We can never be disconnected from the divine. And I teach this, I should know this, you know, but it, for some reason it hadn't occurred to me because I got caught up in a fear paradigm. Again, one of those little eddies as we're going down the river, we get swept off into them and go around and around and around and stuck. And then we realize that we're stuck in one, we have to pull ourselves back onto the path again. So I just found that fascinating to realize that it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because they cannot disconnect us from the divine because it's what we are we, we are one yeah i yeah i agree i do agree uh, and and here comes the but <laughs> <laughs> it's an and um and what i'm witnessing in the few and it is only a few who i know have had the vaccine is and and their practitioners in the field is how sick it made them um putting one person in hospital uh two people sorry in hospital and you know further underlined by um i went to see my reflexologist uh recently and uh <laughs> She said, oh, it's so nice to work with a pink pair of feet. <laughs> she said, your feet are so pink and your lymphatic system is just unbelievably powerful. And she's literally having people crawling in. Like she said, they've just got no energy. And I said, yeah, they've lost their chi. There's nothing to feed the cell. Um, because again, fear, I mean, the effect of fear and panic shrinks the cell and pulls cortisol and adrenaline into the body. And when the cell is shrunk, its ability to absorb photonic light is greatly diminished. And so we, we can't glow and we can't drive the immune system and the lymphatic system and keep the body healthy. That's, that's the fusing of light into matter. Um, so I'm, I am seeing some powerfully negative effects of a uh, vis-a-vis connection slash disconnection to spirit. Um, and it's something to do with the soul. I can't quite get to it. It's something to do with the affecting that bridge and that connection. So I agree with you. Yeah. Divine beings, every single one of us, every single one of us. It's how, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Okay, so what I'm seeing is uh, a road and a super highway. That's the variable. It's a road that shrinks with fear, and it's a super highway that goes with childlike. This is the rebirth of you know childlike curiosity and passion and a certain amount of I don't give one. <laughs> you know? It's defiance. It's a who said to me the other day. It was actually during um, a piece of work I was doing with somebody and they named yet another mental health label, which was, are you ready for this? Uh, defiance disorder. Oh, that was me. <laughs> that <laughs> that okay. was me. <laughs> yeah. That, and I, I don't have it, everyone, just for the I, record. I had to stop what we were doing. I had to stop what we were doing in the field and it's just like, 
give me a minute. I can't process that. So define what I mean. My solar plexus is like, speak on it, speak on it. I am speaking on it. It's just like, so what are you saying to me in that? So in the disordering of my defiance, what are you saying? That I am to be fully compliant in order to be viewed as whatever normal. I'm a long way from, I was born a long way from normal. But are you de deactivating my right to be defiant in a system that doesn't actually but lift and feed and meet and celebrate difference and create this beautiful cacophony of spiritedness? It's, you know, we have the potential to create these fantastic wild spaces where anything goes and yet we conform and conform and conform and shrink and shrink and shrink until we have a bandwidth of expression that big and if you veer outside of that bandwidth you're going to get labeled and medicated if you take it you know the amount of children in america at the moment on ritalin horrifies me horrifies me because these children are coming in through the noughts of the noughties and they're coming in through the birth of the 21st century with so much light i mean so much light ritalin i suspect is not going to support the harnessing of that light so that they can become the new leaders the new leaders so yeah it uh, yeah it makes me really cross and i'm unafraid to show how cross i am about that it's um but again you know it's a catalyst for conversion and so, yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what these next generations actually do, where they go with this, because some of them come in with an almost chaotic energy um, because they are system breakers. That's their job. You know, we came before that. We came to look at the system and go, OK, it's not quite right. And we took the first steps and they came in and went, smash it all up. And, and this is basically where we are right now. And the older souls are kind of going, what are you doing? OK, <laughs> it's a bit like. I wasn't expecting that. Clearly, that wasn't the bit I was meant to do, and, and I can live with that. Um, yeah, it, it's fascinating to me the the stuff that they're coming through with. You know, the ideas that they're coming through with the the. It's almost um, it's a sort of a tumultuous energy that that's coming through the field right now, and and like you say, people are desperately trying to medicate it down, calm it, shut it in a box, you know, sit and look at the screen, be quiet, you know, um, and I feel I felt for a while that there's going to be a backlash against a lot of the technology I don't know when it'll happen but I feel there's going to be a generation soon there's a real backlash against the controlling technology and I'm, I'm sort of waiting for that to happen sort of sitting oh, getting the popcorn ready <laughs> how's that going to happen mm. what do you see happening there what what kind of backlash from who it feels to me like a rejection I felt this in the field for a couple of years a rejection maybe by the zoomers uh, generation Z um, maybe generation alpha who are only just coming around now um, but I feel they're ready a lot of the young people are ready to step away from technology and go you know what this is making us ill we don't like it we've had this shoved in front of our faces since we could look at it and we've had enough we don't want it we're done I feel not everyone obviously but I feel like it's it's coming if it hasn't started already a real starting to reject the screens um, wow. and go literally go back to nature that far back. Long image here. They're showing me Glastonbury and uh, they're reminding me that people used to travel the length of the country to get to sacred festivals around the world, wherever they were. They would, you know, they would go on an all day hike or a two or three day hike to get to this gathering and that was the only way that they would gather this is real time gathering wow that's as back to the land as it gets isn't it mm, absolutely and and i think as well that's why i've been drawn to read one of your favorite books um women women who run with the wolves at the moment um it feels like that that old wild energy that connection to nature connection to source and i think as well this is why the the old nature-based um belief systems wicca is so witchcraft why it's so popular people want that connection they want the connection back 
their spirituality was taken away from them or it was presented to them in the form of a religion that just really didn't resonate and they want it back and they're actively looking for it yeah completely yeah wow yeah i think that book should be on the curriculum <laughs> worldwide um this is without exception the most powerful book i've ever read it transformed my life um yeah really really amazing amazing book and even now you know i mean my copy is dog-eared as anything but i love it and i'll just sit and i'll hold the book and i'll let the page fall open and it's like oh wow <laughs> that's just amazing she she that woman channels carly i swear it <laughs> it's the fearless destructive feminine and when i say that i say it quite guardedly that the feminine um i was listening to a podcast by Sadhguru a few weeks ago and he was talking about this kind of um, know, reassignment of how we perceive the divine feminine as some light and love celestial Kuan Yin kind of gentle loving mother energy but the origins in his part of the world of the divine feminine is Kali and when I started to tune into this energy I was working with Shiva energy at the time and Shiva and Kali blended um, and I couldn't tell where one began and the other uh, ended because this 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 simultaneous creation and destruction energy simultaneous and this part of the holistic feminine because she is Kuan Yin and love and light she is soft and compassionate and powerful but what's been excised from the feminine is the well is that is the warrior feminine it's the slayer and that is being rebirthed as we speak um the amount of clients that are in training as if this is the first time they've ever used their voice and the throat throat chakra clearings that are happening across broad not just in my world across a broader collective throat chakra sacral chakra this expression of that of our divine beingness and powerful sexual expression nothing to do with shagging this is raw kundalini which is going to come through this powerful mist feminine the wild feminine who's been tamed and made polite and tidy and made paint her nails and put makeup on and look a certain way to please another it's all it's all BS and it's just falling away. It's falling away. And even now, you know, there is a really big question in the system about, but how do I bring my bluntness? And it's such a great question. It's such a great question. How do we bring our bluntness? I was talking to, I'm working with an organization at the moment uh, to write them some workshops. And they're talking about Ah, how can I put this? How to meet difference, let's say, in the workplace. And uh, we were having a laugh about uh, different cultures bringing different foods. And um, one culture kind of smelling another culture's food and going, oh, what the hell's that smell? <laughs> and I jokingly said, it wasn't a joke, it would have been my answer. And I said, if it were up to me my answer would be it's the smell of your ignorance and they went oh you can't say that <laughs> you can't say that i said no you can't because it takes practice to sharpen that blade and i haven't done it without great sacrifice and so yes in a workplace you would defer to a certain level of diplomacy but truth must be in there and a bringing down the drawbridge this is unacceptable this is absolutely unacceptable so yeah which opens up the bigger field of how do we celebrate one another's difference you know why isn't that conversation more like that's unusual teach me teach me tell me what is it how is it made where does it come from and learn expand grow and i'm not saying that that we don't do this a lot of people do do this but yeah 
Yeah, willful intolerance is, uh, well, you have a short lived life, willful intolerance, so enjoy it while you're here. Mm, willful intolerance, way too much of that going around. And, and often under the guise of tolerance as well, which is absolutely painful to see. Passive aggressive. Mm. Yeah, you're either in or you're out. Make a decision and stick by it. But they won't like me. Oh, I hear that one all the time. Yeah. But they won't like you. And but they're friends. Are you sure about that? It's great separation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stay back there and squabble, or you can be honest over here with there's like ten of us. But hey, you know you'll be real. <laughs> we we've got better cookies, so come over here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I got a new deck of cards today. Mm, I was going to say, actually, would you like to, to um, I'd love out with a card or two? I'd love us both to draw some cards. Um, and this is a very interesting deck. Why is it interesting? Because the cards are gorgeous mm. and the book isn't. And I'm confused by this. So I... I you know, said hello to them. I'll tell you what they are in a minute. Said hello to them and asked a question and three cards came out. It's like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Nice energy, beautiful illustrations. And then I opened the book and I'm like, who wrote this? This is, uh, I don't like this. I don't like the way it's written. The energy doesn't match the cards. So these are the cards. Wow. Look at that picture. That's gorgeous. You know, Mm. The illustrations are really, really beautiful, but Anna Stark, I don't know what you're trying to say here. It's kind of full of, it feels full of dread. Mm. The wording feels full of dread. It's funny because I often find that with some of the older tarot decks as well. I mean, I have the, the Golden Dawn Tarot. And when you look up the meanings yeah. for it, it's like the world's going to end. I can't use that book. <laughs> I use the cards, but there's no way I'm referring to the traditional meanings of that particular deck because you look at it and go, whoa, dude, calm down. <laughs> it was published. So, yeah, but the images are beautiful. So, um, sacred spirit. Thank you. And any of my Oracle students will know. I'm always saying, throw the book away. Well, don't throw it away, but, you know, don't rely on it. Get what you get out of the cards, because yeah. that's the most important thing. It's your perception. It's your interpretation. Yeah, the and this is the only deck. I mean, I don't use my books anyway. This is the only deck where I'll see how I feel tomorrow. I'll sleep on it, but I think I'm going to throw that away. I think I don't want that in my field. Um, another card for today, please. I've just read this card. I want to pick this up now because it's speaking straight into this. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm being told I need to stick with this um, because here we have 34 spirit messages. Observe limitations. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Observe limitations. Spirit messages 34 7. Okay, I get, wow. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. What I get from this is masculine and feminine coming together, but how? And coming together and creating a space where it's suddenly safe to challenge one another, where it's suddenly a thing to have really adult conversations where it becomes a potential for two people to have a different dream and to hold the difference in celebration and to not get entangled and to move away from the need of can you tell me if this is a good dream and can you help me define myself and you know moving from all of that codependency um and it feels like so i'm picking up on there's an energy of the flower of life here which is kind of building a new blueprint and again we don't know as we align the masculine and the feminine within that is inevitably going to show up in relationships and they are not going to show up as perfect other no they're going to show up with challenge because this is the 
what was this? Translating knowledge into action. Do you remember with the student? Mm. Okay. So we've done the inner alignment and when it shows up and it's slightly out of alignment, what it's going to bring us are the challenges we need to come into alignment in the physical. Done the work within, now it's going to show up without. And we might have to get challenged. We might have to get challenged. So I don't know what you get from that. Fascinating. Um, from where I'm sat, it almost looks like the bird's melting. Like it, it's it's a hummingbird that it's disguised as an eagle or something. It, it's it's that what I get. It's it's not its true self. It's melting off the the bits that shouldn't be there. It's burning them off. And like I I also see the blueprint in the background there. It's like a the the new blueprint being built through wisdom. Fascinating. And you know I actually wanted to say that's what Twitter should have been like, but it's the opposite. And I suddenly hit me as you said that that wow, Twitter and that kind of social media doesn't it create codependency oh my goodness i must put this on twitter and see what people think about it before i decide if it's any good or not oh my goodness or i, I must put it up for people to attack me why <laughs> why <laughs> or someone said something i don't agree with i must attack it and make them agree with me why <laughs> calm down go and bake a cake you know it's yeah yeah it's the thing we're being challenged on is aloneness that's what's coming in at the moment is aloneness and as we learn to experience autonomy autonomy is having the courage to be a misfit to not agree with that and to to hold uh, belief in our own system and so aloneness is coming in because but they don't agree with me and they don't like me. So that's in us, that's gonna get challenged, that will come from the very beginning of be nice, be kind, shut up, uh, sitting in a classroom and being the same and moving through the education system and being the same. All of that is gonna get challenged to, and this, as you say, quite rightly, is challenging his own limitations to become an eagle. <laughs> it's like that, like that meme isn't it of the kitten looking in the mirror seeing a lion <laughs> it's beautiful yeah i'm just going to keep until you throw me off i'm just going to keep <laughs> now let, let's do another one let's do another one we have some time are you going to pull one you going to pull out i may do yes if i pick a yeah, i'm going to go with the fairy deck so where we go with this one at the the fairy tarot here which is one of my newer decks i did a review of it uh, a review oh no we can't have all of those that's just silly um I think I've got that fairy tarot. yes you have yes you used it the other day oh, i thought hang on i have that one <laughs> it was interesting synchronicity going on here um okay wow Okay, well, I've got three cards from the Major Arcana, which I'm just going to show to everyone, which is very, very topical for now. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, in order, because I, I normally pull three and I look at them in order from left to right in a sort of forward trajectory. And that's how they've come out on their own. These literally fell out and they were properly shuffled. The first one I have is renewal, about mm -hmm. looking at the past, looking at where we've been and where we've got to, what we've done um yeah doing a bit of a reassessment of things got the the scroll looking at our scrolls and yeah considering where we've been and we're confronted with ego hmm. we're confronted with ego that says but i put all this work into this i don't want to let go of that i'm good at this i don't want to i like getting patted on the head at work i don't want to let go of that i'm i'm good at this or i'm a good person um and it feels very much like ego. This is the, the trap, isn't it? The ego. This is um, the ego mind. And that's what stops us from taking the new path of the dreamer, of the fool, the completely new path up to the Glastonbury tour. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Up to, you know, getting the, our knapsack on our shoulder and going off to seek our fortune. And, and that's always the energy I get with this card. And cool. I, think that's a, I think that's a term that we should use more often. In, in this day and age, I'm off to seek my fortune rather than <laughs> what career are you going to do? No, go off and seek your fortune. <laughs> yes. That, that's why I want to take people back to this energy, not not this energy of I'm going to join a, a big 
company or a bank locally and get patted on the head and you know have tiny victories and call it a life you know it's no look go, on, go and seek demonized Mm. Yes. I'm a dreamer. Oh, you're oh. A dreamer. But isn't that strange in the age of Pisces that dreamers would be demonized? What is that? How did that happen? Pisces yeah. is the dreamer. Why are we demonizing what we are right That's now? Mm. What seen. cards did you have? So, <laughs> I have literally been talking about this. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, channel your knowledge. Is that critical judgment? Mm. I've got my glasses on. Mm. Oh, oh, critical judgment. <laughs> I'm coming in with a number eight energy. Oh. Burn. <laughs> feels like we've just been burned by a spirit like all right guys calm down <laughs> don't rub it in <laughs> we know what we did <laughs> so critical inquiry is um something i've been talking about well forever um and even this challenges you know the ego dreamer because we don't ask those kind of questions yeah, so just go with the flow, go with the system, be part of the hive mind. But it doesn't feel right. Oh, don't be so silly. Don't be silly. So channel your knowledge is, is, okay, it's again, it's the student, it's translating knowledge into action. This is wisdom. Wisdom equals the application of my knowing in the world. Critical judgment, channel your knowledge. Yeah, what well, this is speaking into. Oh, okay. Channel your knowledge, not your political correctness. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I get dragon energy so strong here. Mm -hmm. Ancient, ancient energy. And of course, yeah, of course, to be a hollow bone in the world, it, it kind of requires that we transcend our egoic need for labels, identity, praise, acknowledgement, validation, all of that codependent stuff that's held us back and made us something that we aren't. Um, in a critical inquiry is really trusting that inner gnosis um, right okay here's a classical example of this brand new deck that i've yet to understand okay beautiful image mm. astral travel caution needed oh but that's number three, the blueprint. There's no caution at three in numerology. Exactly. Oh, oh, that is fear. You know what jumped out at me from that picture? And I don't know if anyone wants to comment on what they see from this card. And if, you know, please do leave comments of what, what you get as well from these cards. To me, that looks like the space jockey from Alien. The space jockey? Oh, I'm at my depth here. I don't know what that is. The, um, they were an alien race that were far more advanced than us that created the evil aliens the the scary ones from the horror films or you know um the ones that, that kill humans that are specifically designed to kill oh, those. human life okay. yeah they were the ones that apparently appear to have created them and you know in late, later films they were looking for answers as to why uh, but that's what they looked like they were sort of these giant very pale almost translucent colored skin no hair big eyes yeah it's um almost looks like one of those to me i'm going to read a few words from this because i'm going to invite your collective to oversee <laughs> to to feedback on this new deck um 
what you get. Right. Astral travel can be described as a willful out-of-body experience, allowing a person to observe their physical surroundings. So for me, there's an out of alignment because the blueprint energy comes from the void. It isn't in the astral realm. The astral realm is, well, the way I see it, the astral realm is where the dead people are. <laughs> um, it's where you can access ancestors and lost family members and that's the astral the void is cosmic and that's where the blueprint comes in from so i think this deck might be full of dichotomy um, but let's see um something something careful practice must be aligned with intention clarity and soulful purpose a sacred portal to hidden realms accessing the astral body allows you to travel and experience different realms of consciousness and universal experience. Kashic records, clairvoyance, psychic ability, sacred light keepers, uh, recommended to have a traveled buddy with you. Now. Ooh, that's gonna, codependency, having a buddy. Um, I think the deck might go. I think I'll, I'll work with the deck, but the book is gone now. Because Anna Stark, if you're listening, Hashtag Anna Stark. I'm not sure where your fear is coming from. Um, I'd be curious to understand. But yeah, this is the most dichotomous deck I own, and I've got tons of decks, and this is throwing me through a loop, which I love. And the next card is Navigate Distractions. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you letting yourself get distracted by the book? <laughs> Come on, Chrissy. <laughs> right, so the book is definitely going ah oh, <laughs> that's, that's insane remove emotional the challenges yeah remove the issue right, the book and is that's going. a 13 as well and we are on the 13th today on, on the day of yeah. um, of recording so yeah, 13 good. death change transformation and a new foundation 13 4 so yeah yes yeah. it's my osc <laughs> oh <laughs> Well, that was my old OSC, which is another story for another day. I, I had two OSCs and the new one is 12-3. Uh, wow. But I had to go through the 13-4. Uh, I went through the 13-4 by misreading my birth certificate forever. Oh. Wow. Forever. Wow. And then That's there was, interesting. Yeah. For the non-numerologists in the audience, OSC is your overall soul expression number. So there we go. And you get that from your name. Yeah. So a few years ago, um, when I was having my uh, <laughs> um, Masonic timeline crash, another story for another day, I had to find, I had to find my birth certificate. It must have been a passport or something. And I got it out and it was one of those holy fudge moments. And I just stared and stared and stared. Ran to my teacher. Um, who helped me do a new chart and you, I could feel this wave of energy just lift the heavy 13-4. Heavy 13-4 is for me is military. <laughs> it's it's the, the holding the tension of opposites, holding the tension while the war dissipates, holding the war. And as we fell into the chart, it was a, the change was one. It was a number one. And um, so we felt into it and, and I just, you know, I said to my teacher, my energy is getting lighter. She said, you are no longer going to be wading through treacle. So yeah, first half of my life, I needed to move through a 13-4, <sighs> hence all my work with the military. <laughs> well, of course, yeah, with the, the PTSD, yeah. Isn't that interesting though, because that is exactly what you do to help other people. You help them to wade through that. And, and not just a military, anyone with, with PTSD or, or trauma from the past. I think that that's beautiful, showing how you overcame it. Although it wasn't, it's almost like it wasn't supposed to be your path, but you did it anyway, by accident, so that you could be the teacher and then let go of it and go, oh, that's not me anymore. <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been wonderful. So... We could keep going forever, but I should probably come to an end of the video at some point um, yeah. before someone's phone runs out of battery. Um, so <laughs> would you just like to tell everyone where they can find you if they want to connect with you? 
Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Chrissy Sawyer, or hashtag Chrissy Sawyer should get you there. Listening to you dot one is my website. And I'm on Instagram and me we but you can pick those links up from my website. So yeah, feel free to reach out. And I will put all of those links in, in the description below so people can uh, can find you and Anna Stark can find you as well and yell at you. That wasn't me, Anna. I didn't say anything. <laughs> no hate mail, please. <laughs> oh, well, so it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Chrissy. Thank you so much for sharing your, your wisdom and, and insight with us today. And um, I would love to hear everyone's comments um, and input as well and interpretation of those cards so yeah. please do remember to leave a comment and give us a like and, and hop on over to Chrissy's channel which is absolutely fascinating she posts a lot more videos than I do um, including are you doing monthly videos now for different signs for the astrology signs or just kind of playing it by ear yeah sometimes I do I downloaded a new reading a couple of days ago I was going to put it out as a collective message but I wanted to go big or go home so I decided to do that reading which is a 17 card reading for every sign so I'm working through those now and then when it doesn't feel right I won't do monthly readings and when it feels right I, I don't take it too seriously but I do want to say that this has been um, enlivening, enlightening, powerful, honest, dissonant AF. <laughs> Uh, such a wonderful experience. I really want to thank you for inviting me onto your channel, into your home. Thanks, mm. Helen. You're very, very welcome. And uh, you're welcome back, you know, anytime, anytime. I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you, Chrissy. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye.